Welcome to this live broadcast once again. My name is Anne Odida and Catherine Simalo is our sign language interpreter tonight. Let's get started. Now, a sea of um, a family dispute is a threatening, uh, or rather, a sea of humanity gathered at the historic Uhuru Park to mark this year's Saba Saba Day, the day which um, derives its history from 7th July in 1990. So Kenyans mark the day differently this year. From a memorial service to the Free Shijaz Memorial Concert, Kenyans chose to honor and remember those who died in the protests. George Maringa was at Uhuru Park and brings us this report. It is a day that has its significance in Kenya's democratic history, the seventh day of the seventh month of the year, famously known as Saba Saba. This year's event fell on a Sunday, 34 years since the first Saba Saba. Police officers were seen patrolling the CBD as plans were in place to hold this year's Saba Saba in Uhuru Park. For the last three weeks, Kenya has witnessed protests, with the genesis being the Finance Bill 2024, which has since been withdrawn thanks to increased pressure from Gen Z. Come Sunday, hundreds who turned into thousands made their way to Uhuru Park. Young and old, men and women alike, thronged to the historic park. They had begun their day at places of worship, such as the Holy Family Basilica, for a memorial service. <laughs> These crosses would welcome you to the park, not too far from the concert arena. The crosses bore the names of the victims who perished during the protests, as well as those still missing. One such fallen Gen Z is Ibrahim Kamau, who died at the age of 19 outside parliament buildings. He had just completed Form 4 and had harbored dreams of joining college to pursue electrical studies. Kamau died after sustaining two bullet wounds to the neck and bears the dark legacy of being the first Kenyan to have been killed in the protests. His mother, Edith Wanjiku, was overcome by grief as she lay roses where his cross was inside Uhuru Park. Civil society groups continue to castigate the actions by law and forces. You know, I have to praise whoever is advising him to continue to respond to the demands of the Gen Z. What we have to condemn is the continued violence against protesters. This country requires a complete overhaul. We don't want uh, cosmetic changes here and there, cutting this, cutting that. We want a complete overhaul. We want to see this country moving to the next level. Kenyans, on the other hand, are not relenting on their calls for the president to crack the whip on some government officials. <laughs> The concert was free and some of the country's top artists also performed free of charge. One such artist is Sanai Pei Tande. Um, but then on waking up this morning, my older brother was just like, Sanai, you have to stand in solidarity with people. To kienda kukiumana kumeumana tuko water. You get what I mean? So he convinced me, actually told me, you have, you have to stand with the people. So that's the reason why we are here. We are, you know, we say we are tribeless, we are partyless, we are together in this thing. So this was my way of showing that I'm, I'm together with, uh, with everyone. The bereaved families who delivered tributes continue to await a meaningful response from the government. Hospitals 
Whereas a good number of today's attendees were not present at the first ever Saba Saba Day, today they continue to shape and reshape their political and civic history in the spirit of those that blazed a way before them. And once again, Uhuru Park has hosted another historic moment, even as this monumental crowd insists that their voices must be heard. George Maringa, TV 47, at Uhuru Park, 